So he's just been uh, rejected by his girlfriend, and probably reading glasses would help. Because I've reached that age. Daniel sat alone on top of Stone Mountain, wondering how the world could have changed so quickly. He sat for a long time, watching the sun set the sky ablaze, Atlanta in silhouette, skyscraper monoliths left behind by a civilization no longer in existence. How could he have been so stupid? All those little signs, the secret smile in her eyes, the lingering of her hand on his, the casual throwaway lines, could they have all just been his projection of his own feelings? No, not after that kiss. Okay, so it was the first time he'd kissed any woman since the last time he'd kissed the same woman 14 years ago. 14 years, God. 14 years, how did 14 years pass so quickly? Anyway, maybe he wasn't the most qualified man to judge a kiss, but he was a man and there was a moment, just as she relaxed until she broke contact, when the kiss went both ways, in that moment, Julia's passion was real. And that moment felt longer than the last 14 years of Daniel's life. Longer and maybe more significant. But then she did break contact and said, it was over for us a long time ago, and it's gonna stay over even if you quit the priesthood. Don't have any illusions about that. No wiggle room in that statement, God damn it. Made him feel like he'd swallowed a brick. The sun was getting low in the sky, time to head down. With the highways jammed, it would be a long drive back to town on the side roads. Daniel stood and walked among the rainwater rock pools scattered around the surface, like craters on the moon. Stone Mountain was the other Atlanta ritual, sometimes before the varsity, sometimes after, but Tim and Danny's Atlanta adventures it always included both. The sun was almost at the horizon. He should go now. In instead, he moved closer to the northern edge of the mountain and sat cross-legged. One time, when he was about seven or eight, he couldn't remember exactly, they'd been caught at the top of Stone Mountain after dark in a massive electrical storm. The sky ride cable cars had been shut down because of the storm, and tourists scampered like wet cats down the slippery hiking trail children wailing and women screaming and men shouting, thunder booming all around them as lightning strode just over their heads. Between lightning flashes, it was so dark you could barely see five feet ahead. The hot summer rain came down in buckets. A bolt of lightning struck so close the earth shook below their feet and Danny's ears started ringing. He was blinded for a full minute. He grabbed his uncle's leg in a bear hug, helpless, whimpering, sure that this would be the end. The other tourists were all down the hill by now, out of sight, but Danny couldn't move from fear. Tim Trinity squatted down and took the boy by the shoulders, looked him in the eyes, and smiled like he hadn't a care in the world. You're safe with me, kid. You're always safe with me. With the boy attached to his leg, Trinity walked calmly to the sheer northern face of the mountain, right to the edge, stood tall, and spread his arms wide like Moses parting the Red Sea. His unbuttoned windbreaker flapped wildly like wet wings. Trinity's voice boomed into the storm. In Jesus' name, I command and declare, no harm shall come to this child of God on this night. All the angels of heaven shall guide our steps, and we will walk safely down this mountain so that we may partake of chili dogs at the Vosity. So it shall be, and so it is. He lowered his hands, winked at the boy. OK, we good. Let's roll. They hiked down the mountain through the pouring rain, hand in hand, under the protection of angels. And amazingly, Daniel felt no fear. They drove soaking wet to the varsity and ate chili dogs and fried pies in the Winnebago and laughed about the storm. On that night, Tim Trinity was truly magic, and Danny was the happiest boy in Atlanta. <laughs>